You mentioned all of the players that were in the mix uh, at the end of the 2019 season. One player whose name you, uh, not intentionally, but one player you didn't mention who certainly took the tour by storm at the start of 2020 and throughout the 2020 season was Sonia Kennan, who's the first player in my top 10 player I want to mention because the advanced metrics right now, David, are not kind to Sonia Kennan. These come from our friends at Tennis Abstract. I call them advanced metrics to spruce them up. They're really just ELO ratings. You look at her overall ELO right now. Sonia Kennan, again, for those listeners who don't know, ELO measures who you play, not what round and when you play, like the WTA rankings do. Sonia Kennan right now, number 31 in overall ELO, number 74 based on her 2021 results. Now, of course, she's currently ranked number four in the world. But if I ask you, David, what number has she played closer to? Four, 31, or 74? It's not four. Like, let's just be clear. That's not the level of late. And you look for her in her last 52. She's 20 and 14 overall. You look here in 2021, she's 11 and 10. And of course, injuries have been a product. It's undeniable uh, that, you know, whether it's injuries stopping her rhythm here at the start of this season, whether it's the coaching changes she's made, there have just been a lot of changes surrounding Sonia Kennan this year. And that's why I'm so fascinated to watch her play because there's that. And then there's, to the point you made about Barty, Kennan's a jack of all trades. She can do a little bit of everything. At the same time, respectfully, and she doesn't want the invitation, but she's not going to be a Serena Williams Power Tennis Country Club member. That's not her game style. And you just see the power and the athleticism of some of these young players, the Sapolankas, the Shviantex, the Andrescu's, even the Rabakinas. Like On their best days, it feels like they take the racket out of Kennan's hands. And yet, when I go back and watch that 2020 Australian Open, when I go back and watch the French Open, her creativity, there's, she is the outlier. She is the game style that is different right now from everyone else. And there is always the place for an outliner. And that's why I'm just fascinated to see if she can gain some confidence this summer on a surface she knows well. Obviously, she had her Grand Slam success in Australia. I'm locked in on Kennan. I'm curious what you think about her this summer. I I sense I mean, apprehension. I, think, I mean, I think it all comes down to the team. I mean, we're seeing her not go to the Olympics because she doesn't feel like she has the team around her that she wants to take to the Olympics. And that's that's pretty, you know, it's pretty telling heading into the next couple of weeks where she really is evidently made this switch. I don't want to say under duress, but seemingly under duress because for her not to have a backup plan feels like this was a decision that was made in some some amount of haste because Mm -hmm. it wasn't working out to start the season she didn't play well and now she is something a bit adrift and it's it's really tough you saw how much pressure she was under getting ready to defend that title she talked about it nonstop in australia before she got to that second round in melbourne just the lights were flashing like early exit and it just hasn't been the same i mean on on the same on the same token i felt ambivalent about her chances heading into Paris last fall and she ended up making the final. She's the type of player that has not um, a considerable amount of power, but in many ways, easy power because of the technique and the way she's able to mm-hmm. generate pace or absorb and redirect pace, I should say. She was able to take out a Barty and Muguruza in back-to-back matches in Australia to win. That was in its own way very impressive. But looking into the next couple of weeks, it seems like the things that are holding her back have not been addressed. And if they if they have not been addressed, I don't see things changing monumentally for her in the next couple of months. I like to make clubs just to help make sense of things. I have the top fifteen club, top two. Yeah, it's actually I really just love the Bill Hader SNL segment, uh, yeah. the skit they do. And so the hottest club right now is the top fifteen club via Tennis Abstract. Uh, yeah. That was funny. Um, yeah, that, that, it's, again, players who are top 15 in both hold percentage and break percentage. Usually, if you're a top 15 server and returner, you're probably a top 10, top 5 overall player. The four players in that category right now, Sabalenka, Sviantek, Muguruza, Jabour. That feels right, right? Like uh, if I tell that if I tell you that's your top fifteen, that feels right. When I extend that out to the top twenty club players, who are again top twenty in both of those categories, you get the addition of players like Sakari, uh, like Mertens, and you get uh, uh, Ashley Barty as well. If you go top. 
25. Then you get Krechikova, Bedosa, Vika, Conteve, Svitolina, Alexandrova, Brady. Those are about your, like, 12 names that matter. Those are the 12 names that, again, and, you know, there are a few missing. Naomi Osaka, who's the number one server, so I think you can get away with things when you're the number one server. Coco Goff, who if I made a top 31 club, she would be in it because it's, you know, she's right on the fringes for both. The problem for Sonia Kennan, for someone who can do all of these things really well, she fits the profile right of a Sakari, of a Mertens, where to see she's not top 15 in any individual thing, that's fine, but you would expect her to be top 20, top 25 in both. She's currently 35th in hold percentage, 36, uh, 32nd in break percentage amongst top 50 players. Like, that's fine. That's fine, but that's all that is. You need something to make life a little bit easier for you, and whether it's your fitness, whether it's your confidence, whether it's just some sort of external factor, that's what helps you get over the hump when you're someone who doesn't have that big weapon. And again, early in 2020, and I honestly think throughout the 2019 season, I compare... I, the two players that were very similar to me were Berrettini and Kennan in the way they went through 2019. Just success across each surface, a couple of big outlying breakthrough runs. For Kennan was the win over Serena at the French. For Berrettini was the semifinal at the U.S. Open at the end. Kennan's breakthrough obviously came a little bit sooner. She wins the 2020 Australian Open. And with those expectations, you're right, have come changes surrounding her. But it's the game that's most concerning to me because I guess my question to you is, is the game struggling because of the off-court stuff? Would that be your assessment? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I, there was reason to feel hope in Paris based on the way she outlasted Oscar exactly. Pinko. That, that was um, the one that just yeah. made no sense to me because I was like, where did that win come from? You looked excellent. Yeah, it just, but and then, and then even playing Pagula, that seemed like a really great, great win for her, but then just not closing against not being able to really put up any resistance against Sakari, having tr- trouble on grass. I mean, it's just, she has a lot of emotions and she's still very young and she's, you know, she'll, in many ways, she'll, she will forever be six years old because of those videos of her and Kim <laughs> Kleister's. And I feel like in many ways she's younger even than she is because she has been as part of this very, um, talk about ensconced family unit, you know, and I think yeah. that, it, there's some growing up to do and not because she's like immature in like a bratty sort of way, but just needs to kind of, you know, take control of her career and have the right people around her. And that hasn't happened yet. Yeah. All fair points. I, would I hope it does. Yeah. Again, the tennis, she she's can do really a little cool. bit of everything. There have never been concerns about Sonia Kennan's tennis dating back to when she was, you know, her Bellis. That was the race. Two of the best American juniors you'll see in the 21st century. And both of them get out to, you know, race out to success on the WTA tour. And, you know, random fact, uh, I believe it's, uh, is it Elena Gabriela Russa who won this weekend, right? I may have butchered the pronunciation yes. there, but a random fact, I was looking up because for a podcast segment and I was like, oh, she's 23 years old, whatever. I was like, oh, still really young. Like, this is a really good point in her career. And then I was like, wait, she's born in 97. I was like, I think Belinda Bencic was born in 1997. And it's like Belinda Bencic is actually like five months older than Roos. And I was like, oh, man, Belinda Bencic is still super, super young. Um, but that's – and I watched Roos. The reason why I looked it up is because like their game's kind of similar. Big forehand backswing. That's a – Roos is not one of my players on my list. And neither is Bencic for the record, although she was a just missed the list. She was an honorable mention. But – um, no, I, I agree. Again, for Kennan, this is a surface we've seen her have success on. We're on the North American uh, court. Certainly, she will have the opportunity to get some training in between uh, the end of Wimbledon and the start of the series hardcore event. So it will be interesting to see how she plays, but enough on Sonia Kennan.